Well, first of all, it's definitely an honor to be a part of the postseason. You never take that for granted. So, you know, we're excited to be a part of this one. Um, you know, and just trying to put in the, the proper work um, for our opponent. Um, a lot of respect going into our opponent. So, you know, a lot of work needs to be put in. There were times when, you talk about being in the postseason, there were times I'm sure with this group, the times six games under 500, it didn't look like that was going to be a possibility. And when did it click for you that this was not only a playoff team, but maybe a team that, you know, had a real chance? Um, you know, just trying to play, you know, string a few games, um, you know, a couple of weeks, um, you know, of good wins or just good ball period. You know, sometimes you can you can play great basketball and still lose a game. So it's not always about the wins and losses. Obviously, that's what the business we're in. But just seeing the uh, consistency of good basketball. So, you know, we, we started to play um, some really good basketball, you know, after the break. And, you know, you can kind of see that we could, you know, definitely make the postseason and be a pretty good team. Hey, LeBron, Memphis, uh, Lakers have a lot of fans here in Memphis. Do you guys kind of feed off that or you kind of block it off, you know, doing games? No, I think our focus is just on, you know, the job at hand. Um, you know, obviously, anytime we're able to get some of the Lakers faithful on the road, it's definitely an honor for sure. But, you know, the job at hand and the game is one in between the four lines. So, um, we got to maintain that focus. Bro, um, you know, just being in Memphis, I know that you listen to, you know, Young Dolph. What's that like being back in the city and uh, just knowing the music? Um, you know, obviously, Young Dolph is definitely, um, you know, someone that's um, done so much for this community and, um, you know, his music will forever live on. But uh, obviously, we know, you know, it's the home of rhythm and blues as well. So, so many, so many great musicians have come from this town. And so, uh, being a, a huge music guy myself, um, you know, it uh, feels good to be um, a part of a city that has so much culture in, in the music. LeBron, understanding that you're going to play the right way, take what the defense gives you. Are, are there times in a postseason series you or AD that you, you know, really exploit a mismatch advantage and kind of you know, even if they're trying not to get have you get to that spot, that you or he are going to are going to keep kind of spamming that, that kind of action? Well, I mean, you have a game plan going into games, and um, you, you want to work that game plan as close to a T as possible. But you know, obviously, there's there's games there you have to make adjustments, and you know, we got to do whatever that's going to benefit our ball club. So. Um, you know, we, we'll see as the game goes on. Wide open to you—is that part of the excitement of being in the playoffs? Is it feels like there could be an opportunity here? West is, I think it's 16 teams in the postseason. Um, there's an opportunity for all 16. In fact, you said uh, when being asked about maybe not being a top four seed in, in the East, you said anytime I come into your building for a game, one, it's to be a challenge for your team. How do you view starting a, a series on the road, being the seventh seed against the two seed? Um, I don't view it as much of anything because um, at the end of the day, everyone's record is 0-0 zero, zero now, um, you know, and uh, we're playing against a very worthy opponent and we respect them a lot. So we just got to be ready for the challenge. Your young teammates like Austin, D'Lo, Mando, guys like that, Beasley, how does playoff? Listen, just go out and have fun. Go out and hoop. Uh, don't change much of what we've done. Um, those guys have been playing exceptional basketball. so. You know, don't put too much added pressure on yourself. You know, at the end of the day, it's still just basketball. Does it get old for you going to the playoff? No, never. What did you miss most about not being in the playoffs last year? Watching it. I'd rather play it than watch it. How important is transition defense going to be in this series? Man, that's important in the NBA, period. Teams try to find a way to score before defense is set. And, um, you know, that's that's just a part of basketball in general. I mean, all the way back from when I was started playing basketball, getting back in transition or you know, getting back and finding a man. So that it um, it stays the same. Do you see an experience from y'all's standpoint versus a young team like the Grizzlies? No. no. Both teams are very well coached. LeBron, uh, how has you know Luke Kennard since coming in? How has he really changed the dynamics of? of this team's offense, especially you know in the half court. Uh, Luke is a great player. He has um, he has a, a dynamic to their team, you know, so we got to respect that, and we got to respect everybody in the Grizzlies uniform. And look, the Grizzlies will be the 23rd different franchise that LeBron wow. James played against in a playoff series in his career. Wow. I mean, LeBron James and the Lakers are back in the playoffs. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. 
with Brian Windhorse. Let's break down what happened on Tuesday night, B. And the Timberwolves seem to be rolling towards a win. Um, and then their offense just stopped. The Lakers outscored the Timberwolves 20 to seven in the final six minutes of the fourth quarter in overtime. What did you see down this stretch for the Lakers? Yeah, you know, I thought that the Wolves had a good game plan. They obviously knew without their two best defensive players, they were going to have to be more of a team-centric uh, attack to get the scoring up. And that worked for a long time. Um, but ultimately, and this, you know, I know it doesn't technically go down as a playoff game, but it's a playoff game. You know, this is what you dream about. And you need your star players to come through in playoff games. And the Lakers star players, Anthony Davis and LeBron James, came through. It wasn't their best games, but they made the plays that they needed to make. That didn't happen for Anthony Edwards and Carl Towns. But it's inexcusable their, inefic their inefficiency and ineffectiveness down the stretch of the game. Carl Towns had no points and one rebound in all of the fourth quarter and overtime. Anthony Edwards, 3 of 17 shooting. You just can't get it done. I mean, like you said, it's disappointing. You think, you know, I feel like we put a lot of effort in. I thought we fought. We were very scrappy. I thought we did a lot of great things. And... <sighs> It's not going to work that way. And I think the Lakers kind of got bailed out a little bit, Cass, because they did not play their best game. You know, they there were some foul calls that were favorable to the Lakers in the fourth quarter and overtime without question. But that wasn't the, the definition of the game. The Lakers defended. The Wolves couldn't get it done. And so the Lakers advanced. Specifically with, with, with LeBron James, he finished with 30 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists in this game. He played 45 minutes, the second most minutes in a game this season. Um, I know we always talk about like he's this ageless wonder, but like what specifically in his performance did you see? Well, when the Lakers made the second half comeback, LeBron was driving the bus. And um, not only that, but he also had some huge assists where he was able to penetrate, draw um, you know a lot of attention and kick out to a shooter the shot. For Dennis Schroeder that set up the three-pointer that looked like the game winner. LeBron takes it in, kicks it out, Schroeder, And so this completes the Lakers' turnaround to the playoffs after they started 2-10. and 10. They were 13th in the standings at the All-Star break, um, and they made the playoffs. They are the first team to have a bottom three win percentage in a conference at the All-Star break and then made the playoffs since 1987, the 88 season. So how should Lakers fans feel about securing the number seven seed? They have a puncher's chance. And the thing about LeBron is that repeatedly throughout his career, he has taken teams that did not have the best roster one through eight and been able to take them to win. He had 25 consecutive playoff series where he had a road win. So if you're going to make a case for somebody to pull something off where they could make a run, without home court advantage, LeBron James has the resume that you believe it's possible. And with Anthony Davis, who can on a night when LeBron may be sore with his foot or maybe not having a great night, can take it by himself. It gives the Lakers basically, you know, opportunities, um, margin for error that, you know, other teams just are not going to have. So I don't think it's responsible to say that the Lakers are definitely going to win the next round. But I think it is a chance that it could happen. Is it 40%? Is it 45%? I don't know. But considering where they were, as you mentioned at the All-Star break, the fact that they're in this position is a success, no matter what you want to say. We went 2-10. The uh, analytics side said we had a 0.3 chance of making the postseason. You know, so all you asked for was a chance, I guess. And look, the Grizzlies will be the 23rd different franchise that LeBron wow. James played against in a playoff series in his career. Wow. I mean, what, what's that reaction? I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. I mean, he's played more playoff games than the Grizzlies franchise. Um, he also <laughs> has more career playoff assists than the entire Grizzlies franchise combined. So oh um, what is the realistic shot that the Lakers have against the number two seed in the West? Right. So uh, this to me is really going to uh, hinge on how effective Jaron Jackson Jr. can be. He got my vote earlier this week for um, Defensive Player of the Year. Since he came back from uh, injury at the start of the season, the Grizzlies have had the best defense. He's a transformational player. Not only that, he has shown he can be a, a real weapon at the offensive end. Um, I think the Lakers are going to have all kinds of problems containing the perimeter attack of John Morant and Desmond Bain 
Those guys are dynamic. Ja is going to cause them a ton of problems. Um, the Grizzlies are going to be, have some success on that front. Um, but I wouldn't mind playing LeBron. They will test us good, you know? They got good pieces, good players, and, and that'll be a good first round matchup for us. Where the Lakers can make a dent is if they can get Jaron Jackson into foul trouble. This is probably at this point, this team's Achilles heel. Because if Jaron Jackson is forced off of the floor, and frankly, his minutes this year were well below what you would like to have for a player of his caliber, Cassidy, because he can't stay out of foul trouble. And when he goes out, the back line there for the Grizzlies is decimated because Steven Adams is not going to play. And not that Brandon Clark was Ben Wallace, but he was an effective big man. So they are decimated with their big man. And the Lakers score on the interior and the Lakers draw fouls. Anthony Davis and LeBron James, two of the leading players in the league at getting and scoring in the paint. You know they're going to apply pressure. And Austin Reeves um, has shown, especially since he's gone to the starting lineup, that his, he's a, a demon in trying to draw contact and getting to the line. Repeatedly, we have opposing coaches and players complaining about the Lakers getting foul calls, and they blame it on... Yeah, not supposed to sit here and talk about the free throw dif dif differential, but um, that was also big. You know, league preferential treatment for the for the Lakers. Yes, occasionally there are calls that favor the Lakers, but of course earlier this year they had that run where they didn't get favored. But part of the reason why the Lakers draw so many fouls is because they have really good foul drawers. And so I think the Lakers' big part of their game plan will be to go ahead and attack that interior and put all kinds of pressure on Jaron Jackson to stay out of foul trouble. Because the difference I suspect with him on the floor and off in this series could be massive. You got the 38 year old and Anthony Davis, who, you know, people are still trying to regain trust. Um, they were both looking like they were running on fumes at the end of that game on Tuesday. Do you feel like they can hold up for a full playoff run? Well, that's the big thing, Cass. I mean, like every year injuries are a huge factor. And we've, the last time the Lakers were in the playoffs, they were in a 2 7 series against the Suns and had the lead, if you remember. And then Anthony Davis came down with an injury. And there are many people who believe if Anthony Davis doesn't go down, that the Lakers make the finals because the Suns made the finals. And, the, you know, and so um, staying healthy, you know, LeBron is, you know, might be playing on borrowed time on that foot. <laughs> I mean, he even off, he's even kind of implied yes. that he might need surgery in the offseason anyway. So it's a real, it is a real thing. In addition to making, their shots and defending and rebounding. They got to stay healthy. Well, the Lakers will look to be the first seven seed to win in a first round since the Spurs in 2010. No team has come out of the play-in tournament and won a playoff series. And it all begins for the Lakers and Grizzlies this Sunday. Thank you so much, Brian, for breaking it all down. Thank you.